It's really important that we take control of our own music and our own lives and have our own music players. I'll make another video about why Spotify and playlist listening is kind of ruining music and ruining things for the artists in the, the music world. But in this video, I'm going to talk about FUBAR 2000 in the year 2023 and 2024. Uh, we have FUBAR 2000 2.0 now. Things have changed. It's a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is sort of get into the nerdery, show you how you can essentially make your own layout, customize everything. And I've created a few different themes, like the ones you're seeing on the screen right now. I've even created a theme for a vertical monitor, which I use myself. So you can pick the widescreen theme, the vertical monitor theme. You can pick vi different variations on the theme, as it were, and just download the one you want, plus the components that I've listed, and just you're good to go. Just play your music. In this first video, I'm just going to show you how to install my theme because I think that a lot of you will probably just do that. And I've customized this theme to make it really functional, but also really useful. Please don't go out and buy a retail copy of Windows because it's going to cost you 10 to 12 times as much as this. This is where I've been getting my Windows keys for the last couple of years right here on whokeys.com. The difference is this is an OEM key, so it's tied to the hardware. The other difference is you'll be doing your own tech support here because you don't get the Microsoft tech support, but we're building a system and I don't think any of us have ever used Microsoft's tech support. So, so right now it's time for the Halloween sale. You know, I'm spookier than Halloween, so we can do 25% off with the coupon code TS25. So these prices you're seeing on the screen here for Windows 11, we can make it a lot cheaper. You've got Windows 10 Pro, we've got Windows 10 Home, we have Office 2021, 2019, and 2016 here. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. You know, I never liked how Microsoft has different prices for different people. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokeys.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. Like I'll give you a quick tour. Over here, I've got the bio. So like the bio will come up, it can be last FM. Um, and we can toggle between last FM and all this stuff. You got all this information here. You can look up that out. That's not a thing. There we go. The composer. There we go. So you can just like toggle this, get all kinds of really cool, interesting information about everybody involved. And that'll work with all your different, you know, music. And then I've got the metadata here and it's a, a tab. So you can look at that. This is the playlist here. Now over on this side, I'm using the new refacets. And I was a little bit sad about refacets because the album artwork was no longer a part of it. However, uh, we can use the spider monkey panel, and that's what I've done down here, to add this. This is a library tree module, and I've got it set up so that it listens to whatever is going to your playlist and then shows you those. I'll show you what I mean. So let's say I want to listen to some, oh, gothic, gothic metal. There we go. And I double clicked it, and all the gothic metal goes down here. Gothic industrial, whatever. I really don't like the look of this, so I'm going to change that to something else as well. Such a weird looking giant thing. And we can change the, the size of these as well if you want to come over here and, and check. Oh, the options are busted, but that's okay. It'll probably be updated soon. Anyway, that's how that works. Quickly changes everything over there. And it's pretty handy. There we go. See the, see the album artwork there. And so there we've got genre and album harvest. And I also have this little tab right here that is not finished uh, populating yet. It says last added. And once it's completely scanned my music library, I'll be able to click on this to toggle the last added thing to my library so it goes to the top. That way I can see whatever I've recently downloaded or added to my library. And then over here I have a similar artist panel that says like, okay, you're listening to Ensemphirum. So if you like Ensemphirum, then you might like all these bands over here. And then there's also the lyrics panel. So I can say, all right, I want to listen to Little Dreamer. Give it a second there and the lyrics should pop up. There they are. So I'll show you how to get this installed. You do not need much to install this. It's really easy. We're going to head over to FUBAR and we're going to grab the uh, latest version of FUBAR and we're going to get the 32-bit version because a lot of the panels and a lot of the stuff I'm using is not yet compatible with 64. Coming soon. If we use 64-bit, we won't be able to have this panel. We won't be able to have the similar artists. We won't be able to have this bio thing down here. These are all 32-bit compatible things. Uh, I think a lot of these will work with 64-bit, but we're just waiting on one plugin to update. 
the JavaScript plugin that is, and I'll show you that in a second. But 32-bit is pretty much good to go for a music program, it's fine. All right, so download the 32-bit version of this. And then we're gonna need a few different components. Now, FUBAR has tons of components. So I would recommend that you scroll through this and grab any that you think you might need. If there's like, hey, some weird file format you want, or if there's a bunch of video game, you know, file formats, they have all those here. Like if I wanna do game, Game Boy, Game Boy, like all these, you can play the native file formats, whatever. Come down here, this is the for your Nintendo DS. But you can download whatever ones you want and just look through, but we only need two or three for what I'm doing. We need the waveform mini bar, so download that. We need open lyrics so we can display those lyrics like I showed you, so download that. And then we need something called the spider monkey panel, and that is a JavaScript panel, which basically allows us to install all of these cool panels like this one here, and this one, and this one that pulls information from last FM. That's all thanks to the spider monkey panel. So we'll install that one. In order to grab that, we have a GitHub uh, link here. Make sure you grab the component and not the debug. That's huge, we don't need that. Just grab the one that says FB2K component. Most of the files you download will be that format. Then we're gonna need a couple additional JavaScript components just for Spider Monkey. So we're just gonna keep on downloading stuff and we'll worry about it all later. This is the library tree. If you scroll down, you'll see the releases here on the right. Click on that. Scroll down and click on the zip file to download it. And just leave it in the zip file, it's totally fine. There's also that biography, and that's here on the Hydrogen Audio forums, which is where all the FUBAR people talk. So scroll all the way to the bottom to get the newest version. But there it is, and it's made by Wilby. So click on that, and that'll download this. Leave it in the zip file. All right, last thing, we're going to need a few fonts. So a lot of this stuff actually uses wingdings for all the, like, forward, back. You know, just so we have, instead of using a PNG or something, it's actually using fonts. So you need to download Wingdings 1, 2, 3. And we also need to download this one. It's called GUIFX V2. So just go ahead and download all these links are in the description. Should be pretty easy if you're just gonna go through it. Download them. And then the last one that we need is a uh, Font Awesome web font. So that's here on GitHub. And it doesn't show up anywhere. Just click on View Raw or the little down arrow right there, Download Raw. Just click on that and it'll download the font. Now in order to install these, just open up the zip file and double click the TTF and click on install. I already have them all installed and I'm not gonna insult your intelligence. I know you know how to install a font, you can do it. Just install all these fonts and we will be good to go. So that's it, now it's time to go back over to FUBAR and start installing things. I'll start with a fresh copy of FUBAR and then we'll go from there. Wait, there's one last thing. So and if you wanna make sure you have auto save and, and backup, so that all your configurations and whatnot are saved for FUBAR, then you wanna download this. It's called the Auto Save and Auto Backup. It's optional, I'll put it in the description. It's called Foo Jesus. Y'all need more Jesus. All right, so let's go through the FUBAR installation really quick. I'm gonna do a portable installation and there's a huge reason for that. Standard, it puts a bunch of stuff into your app data folder and that really annoys me. Um, and I don't like messing around with modding things that are in standard folders or in system folders. So I'm gonna do a portable installation. I've been doing this a few times. So like I said, any folder. Make sure that all the optional features are activated and install. When you first open it up, it's scary. You're like, oh no, what is this? Yeah, this is your audio player. It doesn't look like much. Doesn't matter what you pick, but this is how you, you do your layouts. Now you could just use this if you wanted to but that's not what we're gonna do. Before we get like really into it, we have to put some music in here. Like you really have to have a media library. So you can click here and it'll open up your preferences. If that doesn't show up, just click on file and go to preferences and then click on media library. Right here's your folder, click add and select all of your folders. You can control click as many as you like and you can, you know, as long as everything's organized, it doesn't matter too awful much because it'll try to create libraries based upon the metadata. Then when you hit apply, it's gonna start indexing. So there we go. Now we need to install those components that I downloaded. So go back to your preferences, click on components at the top. This is all we got. So click on install there and those three components, Spider Monkey, the Wave Mini Bar, and Open Lyrics. Again, if you got more components, go ahead and install them now. Just give it a minute. All right, hit apply. It's gonna ask me to restart. So I'll go ahead and do that. It'll probably make my music disappear, but that's all right. Yeah, it did. That's okay, it'll come back. It's still scanning for music. Let's go ahead and get it so we can import my theme. In order to do this, we're gonna need to configure Spider Monkey a little bit, so just click on View, go to Layout, Enable Layout Editing Mode. Okay, that's fine. 
So layout editing mode allows us to essentially create our own layouts. And this is what makes FUBAR so cool. You can just click on anything, cut element. There we go, it's gone. Let's cut this. No, it's gone. Just cut everything, you know, whatever, doesn't matter. Replace things. All right, we can just put stuff here. You know, like let's say we want to see the album art. There it is. How's it going, Pris? All right, um, let's go ahead and get that spider monkey panel here. Now, I'm just, it doesn't matter where I put it. We just need to have it here so that we can click and have it open up and install things. So there's the spider monkey panel. That's what's going on. Just ignore it. So you want to right click on this and go down to configure panel. Now here, it brings us to this page where we have, this is our spider monkey configuration. Now we can install packages and that's what we need. We have to install a couple packages. So yes, I want to install these packages. And now click on import and we're gonna grab those zip files for the library tree and the biography. We gotta do them one at a time. So library tree first, awesome. Import another one. Now we'll do the biography. There we go, we've imported both of those. And just to see if it's working, I'll just click on the biography. Okay, okay, there it is. There's the biography, it's just uh, not really finding anything. So yeah, anime is not usually the best thing for this. But hey, it worked, that's all that mattered. Now, just go ahead and download that theme that I created. Click on File, Preferences, then go to Display, and click on Default User Interface, and then click on Import Theme, and then just go to wherever that theme was. I've got a bunch of them here, but you know, you've downloaded the theme. You can download a couple of my themes and try them out, but Fubar 2 Big Art is the one. You can see it's doing stuff. There it is, yes. Okay, it imported it all. That's what we got there. Now you'll notice if I go over here and click on stuff, it's not updating down here. Oh, it is updating here. It worked. <laughs> so, God, that's a terrible looking uh, thumbnail. In a future video, I will show you how to uh, automatically replace these thumbnails. All right, this thing here, it's really hideous. God, I hate it. It makes, it, it makes me sad. So I really want to get rid of that. Does everything work? Yeah, it just all worked. Blank install, everything worked. Make sure clicking on that, yeah, it's updating. So I'll show you how to get rid of this, but first, I want to show you what to do if, when you click on this, this area here is not updating. So the way this works is up on top we have what's called facets, and that's navigating through our library. You know, over here I've got genres, and over here I've got all the albums, so I want to, like, only black metal stuff. There we go, let's get some Abot. Yep. All right. Now, if this is not updating over here, these thumbnails, what you want to do is click here to go to your settings and then click on your source. And it's got to be source playlist. And you want it going to the default playlist. So if you have a bunch of playlists or whatever, just make sure it's either the default or whatever playlist stuff is going to. So just find the playlist. There's only one listed, so that's why it's working. But if we had multiple playlists, and this source wasn't set to playlist and the correct playlist, then it would be a mess. Now you can set this to work with your library and panels, but that's beyond the scope of this video. And plus I actually like doing it this way better. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. Got my metadata. Oh, I also want to note that this in the middle here, I customized this as well. Uh, I went in and changed a bunch of things on this. So I came and created a new group. There we go. And then I also changed it up so that over here, before it just said um, how many kilobits per second or whatever, but it didn't have the codec. So I changed it up so you could see the codec. And then uh, over here I set it up so that after the, the different track, it'll tell you who the composer is. Which can be really good for, you know, stuff that's maybe an anime album that has a bunch of different composers on each album. So see here we've got the album here and we have different composers. So the album and the composer name are not the same. This is Bubblegum Crisis 2 and the composer's down here. So why are there, why is it coming up twice? Oh, because the artist name and the composer are the same, which makes kind of sense. You could also do this since we have the composer. There, it'll, that looks cool. But yeah, you can name these things any way you like. That's what I like about FUBAR is it's just so Customizable. Knight of Sabers. There we go. You can toggle by clicking here over to all music and then back to last FM. But hey, if you want to change out this, there's one easy way to do it. 
you could go in here and configure the panel and go down to the properties find out where that one is listed it's in here somewhere and just change the URL or change the, the no let's not do it that way there's an easier way to do this because if you can just replace that file on your hard drive then it'll be fine I do like having that there but that's so hideous so inside your foobar folder we need to find where that is it's going to be in your profile so your profile has all your components and everything then you have to click on user components spider monkey actually right here spider monkey panel so just go to your profile then your spider monkey panel and then look inside here there's a folder that says packages and then click on the folder that ends in dd inside here there's assets and then images and then root there it is that's the one that's showing up and it's so ugly so you know what I'm gonna do I'm actually going to um, just resave this it's 256 by 256 I'm just gonna edit this thing and resave it as something else so image size 256 by 256 and I'm just gonna be cheap and grab it all paste it all and save it now this is going to be red one and red two. This is not red one, but I didn't feel it's the easiest way to do it. So now that I'm back in here, let's click around and see. I had to click around for a minute. It took it a few clicks for the cache to refresh. So that looks better. It's kind of weird, but whatever. You can replace it with whatever you like. It's your world. All right, so cool. I hope you really enjoy this. Hope you have your nice new setup. In the next video, I'll show you how to create your own setups. If you want to play around now, just come up here to view, click on layout, do create scratch box. And we have this big empty area to mess around with. And we can just right click in here, add new element. Let's do a splitter left and right. Put some artwork over here maybe. Maybe put a spider monkey playlist here. Now we got to insert a playlist. Import profile, user component, spider monkey panel, samples. J playlist mod there we go apply so there I just made this really quick so now that's all we've got is a playlist and we need some way to play it so I'll do a replace UI and do a top to bottom split let's put this on the bottom so we'll cut it paste it and up here we'll replace this with refacets there we go so it's pretty easy to deal with and when you're done you just come up here and edit and apply layout I'm not gonna do that because I like my layout just fine here. Hope you do too. All right, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. I'll show you, show you how to make layouts like this. And then in the video after that, what I'm going to do is show you how to come in here and do conversions. After that, I'll show you some other cool things like how to just by with one click of a button, have it download new album artwork and also like quickly do searches on Bandcamp or Wikipedia, Google search, whatever, just with one click. So that'll be in a future video. And then after that, I'll show you how to do file conversions. If you have a bunch of FLAC files and you want to convert them to Opus because you're a smart monkey, by all means, I'll show you. These are all AAC files. Opus is the best, by the way. If you don't know, uh, now you do. I make music. So you can go over here to Bandcamp right now. It really fits the mood. I always make my albums in October. Didn't make one this year because I was busy doing other stuff. But yeah, you can come over here and check out the music. Really, thanks very much for checking it out. So yeah, that's where you should be getting your music, in my opinion. Right over here on Bandcamp. Um, it's kind of ridiculous when you compare this to Spotify, because I have um, a few million hits on Spotify and a few million hits on Bandcamp. And Bandcamp is about a 35 to 40x higher return on on just whatever. Just It's so much better for the artists. So yep, Bandcamp, still a thing until the corporations try to kill it, but whatever. Anyway. That's pretty much the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. So stay tuned for those videos coming soon.